fabric just came in the mail. I'm really excited. We're gonna go get it. <laughs> We're grabbing the keys. Honestly, I'm excited. I wanna see this dress. I'm so excited about this dress, you guys. Okay. I don't even have to say how excited I am. You guys know how much I love just big amounts of fabric in my hands. So here I have eight yards of fabric total. Five of those yards are of this crystal organza, and three of those yards are of this crepe back satin fabric. And today, we're making the silky inspired puff dress. So the other night I was scrolling on Pinterest, the way you do, and I came across this photo right here. I literally like jaw dropped. I was like, like what excuse do I have to make this dress? Like I need this in my life. And I kind of jokingly like said to my brother like, hey, like what if I just bought fabric and made this really unnecessary dress? And he said, do it. And now the fabric's at my house. <laughs> so the dress I'm going to be making today is inspired by the brand Silky. I've been seeing this puff dress kind of everywhere lately and it, it's like the one with a really tiny waist. Of, like It doesn't have a waist, it's just like from under your bust, it's just like fabric. But I don't really like it. I think the silhouette's kind of unflattering in my opinion. So I'm going to be making it so that it starts at my waist and it's a little bit different. And I'm not making the super short one that I've been seeing like everybody wear either. The one I saw had these really thick ruffles on it, which I'm kind of in love with. So I'm going to be making it a slightly different version than like the other people I've seen. And I am like so pumped to wear this dress. So the original one I believe is $270 and I bought all this fabric for $30. It's already a good win. And I got this fabric from a website called Fabric Wholesale Direct. I've been buying a lot of my stuff from them lately. So I will link the fabric that I bought down below in case you guys wanna buy it too. And so I got the organza in the off-white color, but they were unfortunately out of the lining fabric that I wanted. So I had to settle for this crepe back satin fabric, which I know satin as a lining isn't always the best idea, but I have faith in myself. And they also only had it in this white color, which I really wanted something off-white to go underneath it. So I might try to dye it with coffee. I've seen people do that before. I know it doesn't work very well on synthetic fabrics, but I'm kind of desperate here. So I think I'm going to try to do it anyway. So I actually have some soaking downstairs right now in a pot of coffee just to see if it works at all. And if it does, you guys will be seeing that process too. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out all of our pieces. I'm so excited. Organza and satin are definitely not the easiest fabrics to work with, especially when you're cutting out everything just because they love to like slide around and mess up all your measurements. But I really love how both of these fabrics work together to make this dress. And most of the fabric for this dress goes into all of the skirts. So the first pieces you're going to want to cut out are, of course, the front pieces. So we have the center and the two side pieces. Here we have the back pieces, and I just used a basic rectangle piece for the back because we're going to be adding in darts. Here are the big giant sleeve pieces, and you're going to cut four out of the organza total. These are by far the biggest sleeves I've ever sewn. Here is the main skirt piece. So this is the one that's going to go on top and this one's a big rectangle piece. I'm going to cut out two of these. This piece is folded in half because we need these to be super big. And then this is our lining skirt. So we're going to cut out two of these as well. And this one is going to be a circle skirt so we reduce the amount of fabric at the waist a little bit. Next up is the organza skirts that are going to be going underneath the main layer. And the waist of the lining circle skirts and these circle skirts are actually the same, but the amount of fabric going around is obviously double. And last up is the ruffle pieces, and there's not an exact length measurement for these. I just cut out as many as I could with all of my leftover fabric, making sure they were all 10 inches wide. Alrighty, welcome to my kitchen. So coffee dyeing time. I just finished cutting out all the pieces. It took me quite a long time. So this is the test little piece I did earlier. The coffee didn't take a lot. It's just a very light color difference, but it's actually, it matches my organza a lot better and it kind of mutes this really bright white. So I think I'm just going to go for it anyway. So I'm going to just be using this um, instant coffee that my dad had and I'm going to just Put it in a pot, I think. I don't know what else to use. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and use this big pot. So it nicely fits all my fabric, even though it is still kind of tight, but I don't think I have a better option. So I'm just going to fill this up with water and let it boil first. That's gonna be a lot of coffee. So I just took it off the heat because I don't think I want it to be all the way boiling. I just want it like hot enough so that the coffee takes, you know? So I think I'm just going to go ahead and add it in until I like the color of it. I don't 
know how many cups are in here, so I don't really know how to measure it out. So I think we just have to go for it. Ooh. So I think I'm going to let it cool down just a little bit before I add in the fabric because I don't want it to be too hot for the fabric. And then I'm just going to really hope that it works. <laughs> also, I really like the smell of coffee, but I actually never drink coffee. Warm drinks just hurt my stomach for some reason. Okay, so the coffee is finally, it's not hot anymore, it's just warm. So I am going to finally go ahead and put the fabric in, which I am really nervous about, but I really hope this works. I think I'm gonna run these under water first so that the coffee takes all evenly and there's no dry spots on it because we really want this to be a nice solid color. So I guess I'm just gonna just uh, plop it in there. Okay, so it is soaking now and I'm kind of nervous about it because it looks really dark right now, but I know that if I were to wash it out, it would just turn white right now. So I put this pot on top of it to completely submerge it and I'm going to go watch a TV show and I'll be back in about 45 minutes to see what it looks like. Okay, so I think that I'm going to let it steep for at least another hour because it's not quite the color that I want it to be and I know it's going to wash out quite a bit. Okay, I let it soak for another hour or so and it is really nice and dark in the pot and I washed one out and it just turned to like the warmer side of white so it's not super dark but I really like it. So I'm just going to go ahead and wash these out all individually and then hang them all up to dry overnight. Okay, so here is the fabric after it's been dyed, and it's just a very like slight difference in color, but I do think it's a little bit nicer than this really harsh white, especially with the organza. I feel like it just matches it a little bit better than this white did. Okay, I am very excited to start sewing this dress, but I only have like an hour to an hour and a half of sunlight left, so I'm going to see how much I can get done today. And the first thing I'm going to do is work on all the bodice pieces. So I'm going to sew our organza to the lining pieces. So for each lining piece, we're going to use two pieces of organza just to make it a little bit more opaque. I think it'll look really nice. So I'm going to start with just these side pieces first. So for all of our bodice pieces, there is the lining that is the front side with the organza over it. And then there's also a lining on the inside. So for the inside linings, we don't need to put any organza on it. So we're only going to put organza on half of the lining pieces that we cut out. So I'm going to take two of our side pieces and set them aside. And then with one of our side pieces, I'm going to put two layers of organza together and make sure that they line up really nicely. And then I'm going to lay it down and I'm going to pin around all the edges and then I'm going to baste around it with my machine. And I'm going to do that with the side pieces, the front pieces, and the back pieces. And now that all of our pieces have organza on them, it's time to start assembling the bodice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take our front center piece. So then I'm going to take one of our side pieces and I'm going to sew it to the side. I'm going to take the other one, sew it to the side of the front. And then I'm going to take our rectangle pieces and sew those to the sides. And these ones are shorter because we haven't added an armhole here. I find it easier to do that afterwards, so I'm just going to make sure that they line up on the bottoms and sew all of these together. Okay, so I just sewed up the whole bodice, and now I'm going to sew the remaining lining pieces together the exact same way that we just sewed this one. Okay, now that the bodice pieces are sewn, it is time to work on my favorite part, the big, giant, very poofy sleeves. So yesterday I made some bias tape from scratch, and basically all you have to do is cut your fabric on a 45 degree angle, cut it so it's about like an inch and a half thick, and then fold both of the edges in and to iron it. And so this is our single fold bias tape, and you can also buy this at like Joann's or any fabric store but their bias tape is often a little bit thicker. So I wanted something a little bit on the thinner side so that when we put it around the sleeves, we're going to be putting elastic through it. So I want it to really be able to gather it in a nice way. So the very first thing I'm going to do on the sleeves is I'm going to take two pieces like we did before and I'm just going to baste them together. And for these ones, there aren't any lining pieces, it's just the organza, so I'm just going to baste around it really quickly. And now I'm finally going to show you guys how to make French seams because I've mentioned them like a million times on my channel just because they're a good alternative to a serger if you want to finish all of your seams. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put our sides together of our sleeves and we're going to put the wrong sides together first, which is not what we usually do. 
And now I'm going to cut down our seam very close to where we just sewed it. So now we're going to take our piece and we're going to flip it wrong sides out. And we're going to basically sew down the seam again. And we're going to push the raw edge that we just sewed in very close to the seam. Pin it in place. And then sew down this again. And now when we turn it right side out, we have this fully encased seam. And then if you also want to make the seam lay nice and flat, you can push the seam that we just sewed to one side and just stitch down it right here. And now before we start ruffling the sleeves, we need to know where to start ruffling the sleeves. As I just tried the bodice on and I put pins where I want the top of it to be and I need to cut off quite a bit so I'm just going to baste a line right above these pins and cut it off and then I'm also going to cut out an armhole and baste around that as well. So I'm going to fold this in half and then very carefully just cut across the top. And now I'm going to just cut an armhole right here. And now I was going to rebaste around this but I think that everything is sewn in place enough where I don't really have to. And now I'm going to use this piece to cut those same exact pieces out of our lining piece as well. And now that we have cut the armholes, I'm going to attach our sleeves to the bottom of it. So where we have this big loop here, I'm going to take the bottom of it and I'm going to line up the bottom seam with this center seam here. And then I'm just going to pin and sew this all the way around. But when we get back to the top parts, I'm going to leave about half an inch at the top where we want the finished edge and I'm not going to sew the sleeves there. <laughs> this looks so huge! And now it's finally time to use that bias tape that we made. So this is going to go around the very big curve of the sleeve. So starting where we stopped sewing on the sleeve, we're basically going to continue that line with our bias tape. So we're going to take one of the folded edges and we're going to make that follow that seam. And we're going to sew it until we get to the other side of the sleeve and then we're going to stop. And you can also fold in this little part of the bias tape just so that we have a finished edge on it. And so I'm just going to very carefully sew right on this fold here. And now that that's sewn all the way around, you can fold this whole thing up. And I'm going to sew on this edge of it to make a full casing. And now that we have this casing here, we can go in from one of the ends and thread through some elastic. And now we have our puffy sleeve. So now once we have it to a size that fits us comfortably, I'm just going to put some marks right here on the start of our casing on both sides. So I was just experimenting with the sleeves a little bit, and this is the one that I showed you guys originally, and this is the second one that I did, and I just top stitched right next to the edge, and I think it makes it lay a lot nicer and flatter, so I'm going to go ahead and take the elastic out of this one, and then just top stitch right across the top. And now we also have to make a casing for the bottom of the sleeves to put more elastic through. And because we have two layers of organza here, I think I'm just going to sew two lines parallel to each other, the perfect size for our elastic to go through. And because we still have to add in the hem at the bottom, I'm going to do this three inches above. And so because we sewed this seam here, I realized we can't just make it go all the way around. So I'm going to insert elastic on both sides and then just sew it so it stops right here on both sides of this seam. And then again, once I like the way it feels, I'm just going to cut it and sew it right here, like I did this one. And now the last thing to do on the sleeve is to just add a little hem on the bottom. Now that the sleeves are done, next up is we're going to attach the lining to the bodice. So I'm just going to take our lining piece and I'm going to line up the top seams. And then when I get to the sleeves, I'm just going to fold them in and then I'm going to sew the armholes all the way around. That's why we didn't sew it at the top so that we can just go straight across for this section. And we're just going to sew the top right now. We're not going to sew the sides or the bottom. And now when we turn it out, we have a nice lining. And it should fit around the sleeves really nicely like this. All right, I am finally back at the sewing grind. I'm so happy to be sewing today. I was thinking about the dress the other day and I realized that I forgot to put darts in the back. So I'm going to go ahead and do that very quickly. So on the back panels, luckily we have this on the bottoms of the other, so I'm basically just going to fold this in half and make two separate darts that are even and they're about three inches away from this seam and six inches long. And it's finally time to start working on these skirts. 
So I'm going to take our rectangle skirt pieces and I'm just going to sew these side seams together really quickly with French seams. And now ruffle time. So I'm going to go ahead and sew these all together into one very long strip. And then after that, I'm just going to do two parallel basting lines all the way around the top edge. Took a lot of thread, but it's finally all sewn. So I split the skirt into four parts evenly, and I'm going to mark out four even spaces on the skirt, and then I'm going to line up those quarters and pin those in place. And now that they're all pinned on the skirt, we have these giant loops. So I'm just going to ruffle it until it fits nicely in this panel. And instead of using pins for this part, I'm going to use these little clips because it'll just stay a lot better and it won't slide as much. And I'm just going to go ahead and sew all around this. And I'm going to leave the seam allowance pretty large here so that we have a lot of extra fabric on the skirt side. It's so fluffy! And now that the ruffles are all attached, they're looking so good, I'm so excited about it. I need to figure out how to finish those seams because this stuff unravels like crazy. So the reason we left such a big seam allowance is because we're going to basically hem that edge. Basically, I'm going to cut the seam that has the ruffles attached very, very thin. And then now that I cut down these little ruffles right here, I'm going to take this side with the skirt. And I'm going to fold this over and fold it over again. Then we're going to stitch it right here above the seam so that it encases all the raw edges. So next up, we have to figure out how we're getting the dress on and off, so we're going to put a zipper in the back. And right now, this is just a big loop, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half and cut a straight line down the back about... about nine inches down. So now that all of the ruffles are sewn, it is time to put two basting stitches all across the top. And now before we start gathering up this skirt, we need to sew the side seams of both of the circle skirts. And I'm going to do French seams on the organza one again, and then I'm also going to put a 9 inch slit down the back of both of them to keep the skirts even like we did on the other one. And next I just took both of the circle skirts and pinned their waists together, and I'm just going to go ahead and baste around the top really quickly. And now we can finally start ruffling the skirt. So we're going to pin our very big rectangle skirt to the waist of our circle skirt. So first I'm going to line up the backs and make sure they fit together, then I'm going to line up the centers and the sides, and then I'm just going to ruffle this accordingly. And I am very, very excited because the next step is to finally sew the skirt to the bodice. First, I'm only going to be sewing the skirt to the organza layer of the bodice. And now it's time to finish up the lining in the back. So it's really important that we get all the finished seams on this dress. As you guys have probably noticed, the organza unravels like crazy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift up the back part of the lining. And I'm going to push the skirts all to the side and try to loop this edge of the lining back to the part that we just sewed. So we're just gonna have to kind of shove this all in here, and then I'm going to pin the top parts all together, because it's really important that these all line up exactly. And then I'm going to turn it over to the side that we just sewed, and I'm going to sew right on top of this seam so that they lay perfectly together. And I'm also just going to baste this for the first time around, just to make sure that it all works out nicely. And now the back is fully encased, and the front still looks all nice and pretty. So I'm just going to go back and restitch that for realsies, and also cut all those seams. Invisible zipper time! So I'm just going to go ahead and insert an invisible zipper right down the back and making sure to get all of the layers of tulle and lining. It just has to be really precise because there's a lot of things happening here. So I just went ahead and sewed the little top edges of the zipper back so that they wouldn't be hanging out. So there's not really a great way to finish this seam. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do a few zigzag stitches down it and then I'm just going to cut the seam and hope that it doesn't unravel too much. And now the last thing to do is to hem it finally, which is very exciting, but also going to take literally forever with all of this. So what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to try to get my rolled hem foot working just so I can get it done a little bit faster, but a regular hem would work as well. It's just going to take a very long time. <sighs> and after about an hour and a half of hemming, the dress is finally done. Ba -da -da, and here is the finished dress! I, 
I say this every time, but seriously guys, I am so in love with this dress. The design is just so pretty and spinning in it was literally like, this seriously might be my favorite dress to spin in and I say that a lot, but if I had a tier list, this might be the top one. These are definitely the biggest tough sleeves I've ever made and I honestly kind of want to go bigger. I just had so much fun wearing them. And also just a fun little tidbit, I literally waited for the warmest day of the week to film modeling this dress and it ended up being super super windy that day so I was still freezing anyway. I hope you guys liked this tutorial, I'm sorry it's a bit of a long one, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you end up making this dress, I always get really excited to see them, I say that every time. But seriously, feel free to send me a picture on Instagram and I post new videos on Fridays so I hope to see you guys there. Bye!